Hello fellow watch fans and welcome to another video from me, Sir Watch Geek. Well, today's video is a little bit different. The um, watches I've reviewed so far have mostly been, not mine, they've been very kindly lent to me for review. So I thought today I would introduce you all to my watch collection. So here's my 2020 State of the Collection video. Sir Watch Geek. Before we go on, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to everybody who's liked and subscribed to my channel. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please like and subscribe so I can carry on feeling ooh, lovely. So where is this watch? Where is this watch collection? I hear you say. Well, here it is. There it is nicely presented in my vertical watch case which um isn't without its problems <clears throat> this is what happened when i attempted to film this video yesterday this is showing you the problem with this bloody vertical watch box can you see that they're starting to fall out so i'm gonna have to tilt that up no no awful 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 Looks good in principle, shit in practice. There, right, I'm gonna tilt these up. Oh, how professional does this look? Good grief. Right, hopefully none of them will fall out. Ah, uh, oh, no, I'm gonna have to cut. So as, as you can see, uh, not brilliant. I've, I've since done some modifications to this, uh, which will prevent the watches falling out. I've glued them in. No, of course, don't be silly. <laughs> I haven't glued them in. I've screwed them in. <clears throat> no, so here we are. Here is my watch collection, um, arranged in order of when I purchased them, except the very first one, which uh, is my childhood watch. I'm going to just spend a minute or so going through each of them, um, telling you why I bought them, cost, rough specs, what I think. Now there is one watch missing, um, and it is <laughs> this one here, <clears throat> which we'll talk about right at the very end. Now, I'm not a watch snob by any means. My cheapest watch in here was 55 pounds, and the most expensive was considerably more, which we'll talk about as we go on. So there are homages here, there are grail watches. I've already been trolled on Instagram a couple of times. I had somebody a few months ago chastise me. How dare I have cheap watches when I have expensive watches as well. Called me a rookie. Blocked. And last night I had, uh, after I posted a picture of this on Instagram, um, somebody commented, oh, Knockoff Hulks and Pepsis, etc. Lol. Knockoff. Ah, uh, yeah. Goodbye. <sighs> so whether you like homages or clamages, I like a watch for what it is. I like every and any kind of watches. There are two quartz watches in here. That's all. I do tend to like mechanical watches. <clears throat> I'm waffling. I've also been accused on a previous video of waffling before I get to the point. So let's get to the point. So here we go then with the first watch. This is my vintage 1974 Timex. Now, yeah, this is now 46 years old and I had this when I was 10. Um, it originally, it's like 32 mil diameter. It's, it's a child's watch, obviously. Um, now, back in 1974, this came on a very wide white leather strap, very glam rock, Bay City Roller-esque, if you like, uh, which completely is at odds with the style of the watch, which is quite obviously a, a diver's style watch. Now, when that strap broke, I put it in my keepsake box and it has travelled from loft to loft during various house moves and and i rediscovered it about a year ago put it on this new nato um it is a little bit too small 
for my wrist, it has to be said. But in terms of what I think really got me into watches all that long ago, um, that's very much one that I am so glad that I kept. 25 meters water resistance and it's still got the it's not ratcheted it's still got the plastic bezel i've only seen one other of these on the internet and i think that was without its bezel so i'm really really glad that i've still got that one uh, on to the second watch then this is my rotary chrono speed one of only two quartz watches that i have in my collection now i bought this during leaner times about 12 years ago after I had to sell my beloved Breitling due to the fact I can't look after money um, and as you can see it's almost a complete copy of the Navi timer itself it's 42 mil diameter the bezel is controlled by the crown at the 10 o'clock position let's see if I can turn that there yet yeah, not really usable um, I recently had um, the battery replaced in it and uh, when they replaced the battery they did a pressure test on it which is something apparently the uh, rotary sort of do um, when, when you have a new battery so it's pressure tested and all the seals are, are absolutely fine the leather strap has long since gone I've now got it on this NATO strap which I think looks the business it doesn't get any wrist time but again it's a nice looking watch and um, one one that I shall definitely be be keeping this cost um, about 130 pounds I think and I don't think they make them any more I'm not sure but you can still buy these new on the likes of Amazon, eBay, etc. Brand new for £130. It's definitely a watch to consider if you like a nice fancy watch for the money. So on to my Navi Timer world. Now this is a stunning 46mm diameter watch. It's the Navi Timer world. I think it's now called the Navi Timer GMT46. It's the A24322. I bought this a year ago when it was four years old on the brown croc strap, but this isn't the original. I took that off to preserve it because it was getting worn a little bit. This is an aftermarket cheaper strap, but still still looks fairly good. And this cost me £2,900. Now, I don't think Breitling make the white one anymore. It's I certainly couldn't find it on... On the website but the blue version is available called the the Navi Timer GMT 46 and I think on the leather strap it's 5250 pounds so this is a very good example of buying used somebody else has suffered all the depreciation and you're getting a beautiful grail watch there for half the price thereabouts lovely case back there really do like it it's in almost mint condition um and i absolutely love it i'm going to be saying i absolutely love it quite a lot during this now i've got seven inch wrists i'm going to put it on bear with me there we go so this is it on my seven inch wrist now i'm not a snob when it comes to oversized watches a lot of people worry about whether a watch looks too big for them I really say go with it. I haven't got massive wrists, they're not small, and I don't think that looks too big for me. And that's all I care about, what I think. Um, let me know what you think in regards of watches being too big or too small. I know trends come in and out with regards watch size. I think that looks absolutely stunning. This features Breitling's B24 movement, which is based on the Etta Valju 7754 and has a 42 hour power reserve, which isn't massive. <clears throat> it isn't massive, but it is what it is. So that was it. 
the bug for watches and watch collecting was well and truly underway again for me now on a visit to my ad in worcester just for a look-see saw this now this is the super ocean heritage 2 46 mil again um, i do like my watches big i think it has to be said now i hadn't considered other watch styles and types the navi timer is was and is and always will be my absolute favorite watch but when i saw this um i thought this looks absolutely stunning no display case back it's nice and nice and plain if you can see in there probably not very good let's put it on beautiful mesh bracelet there you go so another 46 mil I think as long as the lugs aren't really overhanging your wrist, I think you're absolutely fine. I know, you know, I, I say I don't, I'm not a snob when it comes to wrist size, but I think you can buy them that are ridiculously too big. I don't think that's too big at all. Now I bought this new, um, no secondhand deals to be had with this. I had to have it, um, it was, three thousand eight hundred and ten pounds new but i did get a lot of discount which took that down to a more reasonable price can't remember what that was off the top of my head it has breitling's b20 movement which is based on the tudor mt5612 and this has significantly more power in it than the the navitimer world we just saw this has 70 hours of power reserve and uh, I, I just absolutely love the blue. Oh, yes. So on to the next one. And this is my absolute uh, favourite watch of all time. The classic, iconic Breitling Navitimer. This is the B01. And you've guessed it, it's 46 mil. Now this features Breitling's in-house O1 movement with 70 hours of power reserve. Now I didn't buy this new, this was another used, I'll say bargain, it wasn't really a bargain as such, but um, this cost me £3,945 when it was only one year old. Now new on a leather strap, this retails at just over £6,600. So this is really another instance of, of buying smart, buying used, because there are plenty of them out there. Beautiful display case back, which really shows off the gorgeous movement. So here it is on my wrist, another 46 mil, as I say. Don't think it looks too big. I think it looks absolutely spot on. It certainly is an eye-catching watch, a stunning watch, and is still my all-time favourite watch. Very fortunate to have it. And I love it. So just a very quick recap on my three Breitlings. There they all are, all looking splendid, all looking different. Absolutely love them all. So I was pretty much spent out, really, having bought uh, my three grails. Um, so a bit of a departure now. I went through a bit of a, a bit of a homage phase. Um, never thought that I would ever own uh, a Rolex. So I went for the Pagani Design PD1639, which is basically a Rolex Submariner Hulk Clamage. Now, love them or loathe them, I certainly don't have a problem with homages. Uh, this cost me £55 delivered to my door through AliExpress. It's 43mm diameter, so it's 3mm bigger than the Rolex. Uh, it has um, the NH35 movement inside there behind the display case back. In terms of features, you cannot knock it. It's got the ceramic bezel. It's got sapphire crystal. It's got a screw down crown. Okay, the loom is pretty shit, but I can forgive it that. 
even the bracelets nice i've heard people complaining about the bracelets this this is um this is gorgeous in every way and as i say 55 pounds now i'm going to equate this to cars now if you buy a kit car or you build a kit car nobody says oh that's a kit car that's not the real thing a kit car generally has um, a fiberglass body it looks exactly like the real thing and it has i don't know say ford running gear underneath it's an affordable way to drive a car that looks like a classic i equate that to this this is an afford it's not okay it is a copy of a rolex but it doesn't say rolex it's not a fake this is a pagani design it's bigger than the rolex but in every other respect it's exactly the same now if you want to get into watch collecting uh, for 55 pounds and the rest of the paganis are similarly priced as well it's a very very cost effective way to get into the hobby you're not spending a lot of money i've had this now oh i don't know coming on for a year probably a bit less um it's never let me down it's absolutely perfect i'm not a watch snob some people hate them some people have nothing but homages don't know what your views are but this certainly uh, features on my wrist in my normal rotation so I was on a bit of a budget watch collecting spree. This next one is the Casio MDC 106-1A, AKA the Duro or the Marlin as it's sometimes referred to. This is the second quartz watch that I have in my collection. You can see where it gets its styling from. It's 200 meter water resistance. This is 44 mil diameter, so it's not exactly small okay it has hardened mineral glass instead of sapphire but you've got your screw down crown and of course famously owned by bill gates now for around 60 pounds this is an absolute bargain it actually came on the the sort of ribbed rubber strap which i didn't really like i've tried various straps on this i've got the bond style nato on here and it looks absolutely gorgeous on the wrist. There we go. As a daily beater, you, you cannot beat this at all. I think it looks absolutely stunning. Really does. Bit of a strap monster. You can, you can swap this out for various straps. I've even had a nice um, stainless bracelet on here as well. And it looks exceptionally nice. Definitely a watch to have in your collection, I think. And for £60, you just cannot go wrong. So the next one we have here is the new Seiko 5 Sports. This is the Pepsi version, one of a range of 27 released in 2019. This cost me um, £212 new, not on this bracelet. We'll talk about that in a second. So at this stage, I was, I was going through my buy affordable watches phase. And there's so many nice watches for around the two to £300 mark that... Uh, I bought one or two. Now this is 42 and a half mil diameter. I've now seen it for less than 200 pounds online. It's a hundred meter water resistant, so it's not a diver diver. There is no screw down crown here, but I, I wanted a Seiko. It has the 4R36 movement, which is updated from the 4R35 movement in that this has the day as well as the date and of course the 4r36 movement is the seiko only version of the commercially available nh36 and this has 41 hours of power reserve now i absolutely love the bracelet that i've put on this this is a bracelet that came with a watch that is coming up in a bit i've tried various straps on here but I do absolutely love that combination. And uh, I think you'll agree on the wrist, it looks absolutely stunning. The only Seiko that I own, although I have plenty of watches with Seiko movements in them, but um, I do like this an awful lot. 
So still on my buying affordable watches for under £300 phase, this is the gorgeous Orient Triton here in two-tone black and gold. £295, it's still available online at just over £300 now. This is 43mm diameter, it's a 200m certified diver, screw down crown and featuring Orient's in-house, there's no, there's no display case back, it features Orient's in-house 40N5A movement, 40 hours power reserve, and the nice addition there of the power reserve indicator. So when you wind this up, let's just move the, if you start winding this up, you'll see that needle start to rise up. There you go, I'll leave it, I'll leave it there. So you can see at a glance how much power is left in the watch. I wasn't really a fan of uh, gold, really. Thought it looked a bit blingy. Comes on an all stainless steel bracelet. But the more, the more I look at this and the more I wear it, I do. And the loom on this watch is, is monstrously good as well. Really is really is nice and for around 300 pounds uh, again it's a it's a fantastic value for money watch so the next one then i can't remember where i first saw this but this is the satina ds ph 200 m which is a reissue of their 1967 diver 43 mil diameter 200 meters water resistance and very much retaining the original features of the watch. It's got a Hesalite um, crystal there or plastic treated with scratch guard. It's got an aluminium bezel and they've now updated this watch with a new DSPH200M which has a domed ceramic bezel and sapphire crystal and, and it looks different to this watch. I much prefer this watch if you can see that domed hesalite on there it's gorgeous uh, and here's the case back they do um, support sea turtle conservancy satina do which they've been involved in for a few years now this watch i managed to get a very good deal on this this watch cost me 464 pounds new which was significantly cheaper than they were going for at the time. I got this from, I think they were called Cohen and Massius, which are a Gibraltar shop, and they sell their watches tax-free. And it was £464 delivered, and I think, and it, it didn't come on this strap, it came, this one came with a plain uh, leather strap and also a NATO and it features as well, this one doesn't, but the ones that it comes with feature quick release spring bars for easy swapping about. And you can also get this watch with a mesh bracelet as well. I absolutely love the rally strap with this design. Okay, it's a diver and you wouldn't go diving or in the sea with the uh, leather strap on, I don't think. I'm not planning to. I've got plenty of other watches I can wear for doing that. I think that look is killer. So the next watch I was seduced by is the Spinnaker Dumas. Now what seduced me on this one is the angular hexagonal 70s feel to it. I really do like this watch. This is another sub £300 watch. It costs £280. It's got the NH35 movement. Kel Surprise, just focus on there, display case back. It has the Spinnaker emblazoned rotor. It's 44 mil diameter, but is a whopping 16 mil thick, 300 meters water resistance, and it came with a crap bracelet. Um, hopefully I can find the clip of what I filmed before. The mesh bracelet that it came with is it's a, it's a well-known sort of design flaw. It's completely unusable. It was a mesh bracelet in two halves. 
the keepers on them were so big that it didn't the keepers moved and the strap flapped flapped about you couldn't it was unusable so i bought a fairly cheap mesh aftermarket bracelet i'm not sure whether it's the best bracelet for it certainly on the wrist it's a chunky watch it's a big chunky watch and the loom on it as well is absolutely fabulous you don't need any external lighting you can just point the way with this another Pagani design watch here guys this is the let me just give it a quick this is the PD1662 the sub homage Batman clomage this is another Aliexpress purchase 79 pounds it was an early version this was which wasn't without a fault and it wasn't until I saw this mentioned on a uh, online that I found the fault but if you look at the bezel there the split line between the blue and the black isn't actually halfway through the six it's not exactly in the middle now I can live with that it's not something that is a really it really is a deal breaker for me um, later versions have corrected this NH35 movement this is a 40 mil diameter GMT I hope that's just a mark on the lens yes it is no faults cheap as chips very nice to wear there we go 40 mil looks stunning nice daily wearer no complaints whatsoever and of course it features the screw down crown the ceramic bezel the sapphire crystal uh, what's the water resistance on this i think it's or what does it say on it well it's a hundred meter water resistance so suitable for splashing around in the pool or uh, in the shallow end of the pool or paddling in the sea are you still with me everybody <laughs> fair play um, next watch then is another homage this is the steel dive um, seiko 6105 captain willard homage 93 pounds from aliexpress nh35 movement there's no display case back here it's the steel dive uh, two air tanks and goggles kind of motif just under 44 mil diameter 200 meter water resistance 120 click bezel which is one of the stiffest oh actually it has actually freed up a bit this was very stiff when i first had it but it's a gorgeous bezel lines up a treat no problem at all didn't come on this strap i bought an aftermarket waffle strap to try and complete the the vintage 6105 look now there are other versions of this by Heimdaller, Heimdall, Heimdall uh, and San Martin to uh, mention a few but they're a bit more expensive and I do believe they all come from the same factory so for £93 thereabouts on Aliexpress certainly a nice watch to have let's just put it up on the wrist there no complaints at all lovely Now this one is a bit interesting this is a bit different this is my first limited edition watch this is the marlow watch company coniston speed edition now um, this is limited to 500 pieces they are all sold out now uh, marlow are a british micro brand company uh, wait till i turn over the back oh look at that isn't that gorgeous this features the Myota 8N33 movement. It's hand winding only, 40 hour power reserve, 100 meter water resistance, sapphire crystal, BGW9 loom on a 40 mil diameter. Now the loom is absolutely killer on this. As you can see on that loom shot, it is something special. It's not the kind of loom that you see every day. 
but it's only 65 grams in weight and which does feel very very light it's beautifully made beautifully constructed now all marlowe's watches sort of are based on a theme and as the name the coniston speed suggests this one is a nod to speed king sir donald campbell and his jet hydroplane powerboat bluebird which set four water speed records in the 50s on coniston waters uh, and as a lot of you may know he tragically lost his life during another world record attempt in 1967. this just under 300 pounds 299 pounds they've sold out of this one check marlow watch company out there are various other versions they've just released a couple of new ones i think the black edition has already sold out they have plenty and if you want something a bit different this is definitely a watch and a brand to uh, to look out for we're getting there guys we're not far from the end now uh, so this is another grail watch this is another watch i'm very fortunate to have that i purchased new again this is the uh, omega seamaster professional diver 300 went for the white dial uh, which oh, is absolutely killer um, now this new um, well it cost me three thousand six hundred and sixty pounds that was with a bit of discount and this was my obviously a step up from my budget range 42 mil diameter a 300 meter diver with the Amiga Metas approved master chronometer calibre 8800 movement and there it is beautiful display case back beautiful movement in there unmistakably Amiga these models uh, are updated for the 25th anniversary release and it's beautiful in every way now the stainless steel bracelet to me it was a little bit plain i've tried it on various natos and at the moment i'm rocking the zealand aftermarket rubber strap on the white obviously i also bought the orange as well and uh, i think this combination looks absolutely killer the price new for the seamaster 300m is now 4450 the prices have gone up recently as you may know um, I got it for 3660 now other people may say I got mine cheaper than that oh you didn't get enough discount I am very happy with the discount I've got and the relationship I have with my Amiga AD now this is a very nice watch in my view this is another micro brand company the Stratton watch company and this is the Special this cost uh, £1,023 with all the import duties paid. It's a beautiful 70s retro TV style watch. And this has the Swiss Valjoux 7750 movement. It's 42mm diameter. I'll say diameter. It's 42mm across. 15mm thick. Look at that shape. Look at that shape. It really does stand out. Now they've uh, currently sold out of these, but there is a new batch, I believe, being readied for early in 2021. This also comes in a Mecha Quartz version, which is cheaper, but doesn't have the day-date complication. Now this is the, the strap that's on the Seiko here is the Stratton strap. Now what I've done, I've actually this actually came with a, um, a leather a blue leather rally strap as well but I've recently bought this wonderful roll ball strap from strap code yeah it cost a little bit of money but it's um, it absolutely in my view completes the 70s retro feel of this watch it's a gorgeous quality strap And on this piece, I think that looks absolutely amazing. I really do. I love the way the watch wears. I love the way it feels. Yeah, it's very, it's very domed. 
um, you've got to be careful with it but look at that it's absolutely gorgeous so hot on the heels of the Stratton Special came another Stratton watch this is the Stratton Yacht Racer another limited edition watch this is limited to 50 pieces in both 40 mil and this one the 43 mil version now incredibly i've had this watch a few months now and i was just checking their website yesterday incredibly there does seem to still be 10 left now this cost 496 pounds with all duties paid it's actually gone up by a hundred dollars i was an early an early buyer of this it features the and here we go it features the seagull st19 movement look at that absolutely gorgeous and it this movement this version has the additional custom swan's neck regulator as well c3 loom 200 meter water resistance all the usual bells and whistles and i, I do have another strap coming for this soon as well i have a, a, a red rosso rally strap coming from outlaw straps which i think will give the watch a, a completely different look again as well very unique very unique now the only gripe i have about this and i've mentioned it before is that um out of a limited edition of 50 i got number 46 i was the first person to buy it when it became available and there are still 10 left so there are still watches in stock that have a lower number than this it's grated on me a little bit but it doesn't matter it's not going anywhere this is a firm a firm watch in my collection okay guys this is my uh, this is my third and final pagani design don't know why i bought it um a nice um, date just clamage here uh nh35 movement all the usual features that the paganis have this cost me 58 pounds and 27 pence delivered so incredibly good value uh, went for the gold and stainless two-tone effect i don't know why i just fancied something different so the biggest problem i had with this is unlike the other two paganis i could not shift the screws to adjust the bracelet they were lock solid so much so that i stripped a couple of the screws took it up with uh, with aliexpress and took it up with the seller the pagani design official store they shunned all responsibility didn't want to know said that i broke it uh, backed it up with evidence from some facebook groups where other people had had the same problem i now know because we don't automatically we aren't born with the knowledge of everything but i now know that they're locked in him um, I am now awaiting for a, an alternative, a replacement bracelet to come. It's been well over two months now. It's been about a month in the UK stuck in customs. It's a replacement bracelet. If, is it going to come? I don't know. Haven't been able to fully enjoy this for that reason that it's the third Pagani design that I've bought and the official store didn't offer any way of customer support it was only after persistently arguing with them that they finally agreed to send me another bracelet so i'm not even going to put that one on i'm putting that one straight down we're getting there guys now this is another absolutely stunning watch this is a another limited edition this is the beautiful oris carries fort reef which i bought from my good friends at francis and gay after having lots of troubles with other places we won't go into that i have some videos there you go there's only 2000 of these being released um i got a good deal at the time i've now seen it online for slightly cheaper the price i've seen this online is uh, 1680 pounds now this is released in support of the Coral Restoration Foundation and supports the plight of the uh, the coral reefs, specifically the Carisfort Reef in Florida. Oris do have a lot of tie-ins with ocean conservation, which is really good. 43.5mm diameter, GMT, 300 meter water resistance. 
it features well it's no good me turning over the back you can see the lovely coral display on the case back there the coral engraving on the case back it features the oris caliber 798 movement which is based on the Salita SW330-1 and has 42 hours of power reserve. I opted for the orange rubber strap. I think it was slightly more expensive with the stainless, but I really did. And it's, I've also got a video on, on YouTube, my, uh, my full review of this. Bit of a bugger to get on, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Oris convert. I think it looks absolutely stunning. I absolutely love this watch. Everything about it stands out. And, and this has an awful lot of wrist time at the moment, as you can well understand. On to the last book one. This is the uh, Satina DS Action Diver. Now, I was loaned this from Francis and Gay for review. Uh, which I've done a video on, and I loved it so much. I loved it so much, I bought the company. I know, I loved it so much. It didn't go back. I bought it. Um, this is a stunning watch. It really is. 43mm diameter. It's a true dive watch, certified to ISO 6425, 300 meter water resistance, featuring the Satina's Powermatic 80 movement. Yes, 80 hours of power reserve which is based on the ETA 2824-2 movement. Uh, another watch, obviously, Satina, that's related to Conservancy, the Sea Turtle Conservancy of Florida. I think this retails at £725. I got a nice deal on it from Francis and Gay. Lots of features on this, which you'll see from my review. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. This one features the green text and the green second hand it comes with other colors as well red and blue um i can't remember anymore but i think that's gorgeous and i this is one of my favorite pieces really is and for under 600 pounds if you get a good deal that is a stunning watch to own so that's 20 of my watches then which leaves us to talk about the very last watch which is in here now, <clears throat> slap me in the face with a wet fish and call me stupid, but I went and bought it. Yes. The Rolex Submariner 116610LV, aka The Hulk. Ah, dear me. Yeah, I... Uh, I was shown this at uh, Francis and Gay Jewellers when I was there and um, I, I had to have it. Um, very, very fortunate to be able to own this. I know I've paid the going rate for them at the moment. This watch isn't going anywhere. This is definitely staying with me forever. But I also do see it as potentially an investment definitely not bought on the fact that it might be an investment bought on the basis that it is my grail of grail watches you can forget your pagani designs now let's just let's just show you that as a comparison very interesting to show those as a comparison actually you can see now you can see that the pagani design is bigger but when you look at them there's, there's not an awful lot of difference when you come to the looks, I have to say. But uh, we'll put that to one side. This is what it's all about. This is the Hulk. I absolutely love it. I'm not going to bother going through the specs. You, you all probably know what they are. So let's put it on. Ah, there you go. I still drool every time I wear this. I really do. So there you go, guys. It has left me really wondering what 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 am what am I going to buy next? I, I, I've sort of <clears throat> got everything I want. Um, yeah, I went through my phase of buying two hundred pounds sort of watches. I went through my phase of buying homages, and I'm very very fortunate that I've got <clears throat> four, three, four, five Grails. 
and then a few watches that are a thousand pounds so I'm, I'm very lucky um, and I don't know what to do next although I, I have got another watch coming it's a vintage watch yes I thought I'd dip my toe into the world of vintage watches next not a great deal of money 80 quid we'll see what it's like when it comes and that might be my next video talking of next videos if there are any questions that you may have regarding any of these watches drop a comment below or if you would like to see a more detailed review of any of these watches yes i know they've all been reviewed a million times but if you want to hear my take on it <clears throat> now that i've got these and i've owned them for a bit if you'd like to know anything drop a comment below and um because I haven't got a clue which one to sort of review next, I, I, I don't really know. So perhaps you can tell me, help me out, drop some comments. Um, and that's about it from me. Uh, where are we? We're just about at the beginning of December nearly. So I hopefully will do another video or two before Christmas. If I don't, have a good Christmas. If I do do one, well, I'll see you before Christmas. So until next, I'm waffling. So until next time, take care, stay safe and see you soon. I hope this is in f focus.